giant snake in my backyard. If it's yours or you want a big 10-foot python, hurry. Also in Just One Station tonight, a fearless teen stepping in to catch an intruder that slithered into someone's backyard. Gotcha. A massive reptile. But to the teen trapper, it was no big deal. 16-year-old Anya Go Lightly remains cool as a cucumber as she holds the reptile right below its head. Coiled in controversy. Wildlife officials making a snake mistake. The officers mistakenly pull a pregnant boa constrictor out from her cage. But they did, like, they killed the wrong one or something like that. One of these was pregnant, had like 50 in it. Oh, so now he realized he killed yeah, the killed wrong one? one or something like that, yeah. Oh. But the, the longer muscle. video of oh, like no. them killing it is pretty great intense. I don't need to see it. Yo, I can't watch it. Those animals mean a lot to me. In April 2023, two different events involving pythons in Broward County, Florida, received extensive coverage from both local and national media outlets, even being covered by some of the same TV networks and reporters. The first story was that of a brave 16-year-old girl named Anya Golightly, who captured an 11-foot reticulated python in a neighbor's backyard. The other involved a man named Chris Coffey, whose collection of reticulated and Burmese pythons, along with his friend's pregnant boa constrictor, was slaughtered by FWC. At a glance, the two incidents may appear to be unrelated, but upon closer examination, we find that they are in fact two interconnected parts of the same story. We recently had the opportunity to speak with Anya Golightly and her father Daniel as they joined U.S. Arc Florida President Elizabeth Wisniewski at the Repti Day in Boynton Beach. In addition to being a star student athlete, Anya is a budding snake breeder. She produced her first clutch of baby ball pythons when she was just nine years old. We spoke to Anya and Daniel about their capture of the reticulated python. It was me that got the notification on my phone uh, about from a some neighbor who was just basically like a uh, huge snake in my backyard. Um, you know, if it's yours, come get it. If you want a 10 foot uh, python, Hurry. He went outside and saw it climbing up on his plants and was like, immediately turned back around, went back inside and kind of watched it from the door. And then um, was pretty much like, holy crap, you know what I mean? Like this huge snake is in my yard. And so, you know, from there, that's when he decided to, I guess, make the rain notification. And, you know, you know, we went to go try to help. But, you know, when a lot of people who don't have snakes see a snake. Every snake is huge. If it's a foot long, it's huge. If it's a foot and a half, it's huge. So I was thinking it might be just like a ball python, you know, three foot ball python. And somebody was like, oh, my God, it's huge. And then um, when we got there, we realized, like, wow, like, that's not a ball python. That's, you know, that's a, that's a big snake. I've never really caught any wild snakes before. I've only caught one, and it was a water snake. And so this was a little, a little different for me because the water snake was like three feet. This is about 10 feet, you know, I just didn't want it to get hurt because the way that I grabbed it, he was, I had him in my hand because, you know, he's a big snake. So I had to grab him with my whole hand. And when he was wrapping around my hand, he was squeezing his head more and more. And honestly, I was just going to let go and honestly risk getting bit before he almost like accidentally hurt himself really badly. Very friendly. He was very, very, very friendly. calm. Yeah. In the beginning, we weren't sure. We didn't know. Like, um, we we tried to, like, you know, tap it a couple times to see its response. It hissed a few times. So I was like, I don't know. But um, once we did get it home, we realized, like, it was beyond domesticated. Like, it was so sweet. She named the snake and everything. Frederick. That's what I named him. Mm. And the day after we caught him, when I got home, I got home from the softball game. I just, I, we took him out the bag that we caught him in and I held him for a little bit and he just, he just chilled on me. He was a real sweetheart. Like like I was telling her, when we caught it, we weren't really sure what to do with it. We, um, you know, we, we pretty much was just going to try to just give it away to a to a pet shop that, that owns like, you know, that has enclosures big enough for it. Um, but nobody really wanted to touch it. And we didn't really understand completely why completely at first. And then it was like, oh, shoot, these things are illegal. So nobody wanted to touch it. Nobody. We we're just like, hey, we have a retic that we're just trying to get rid of and give a home, uh, find the owner, whatever, whatever. And nobody would would touch it. So then we called around to a couple of places, uh, people that we knew, like vets and stuff like that. Yeah, that's when one of the uh, vets, they had known some people and was like, they could probably point us in the direction of some people that could help rehome it into a uh, 
safer place or maybe even get it out the state. And so I was like, all right, cool. And um, so that's what we went with. Uh, we got the information from the from the vet or whatever. And uh, we got a call from somebody who was saying that they were going to come out and uh, see what kind of snake it was and everything like that. And then pretty much take it off our hands because I mean, like I said, had it been that illegal, we would have just kept it in with such a great snake. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Officer Jonathan Wright comes to your house. Um, they got there. They they came in. She wasn't there. They they got there. They came in. Um, they came to look at the snake. I literally took the snake out the bag. I mean, I just wanted them to see like this snake is friendly. Like it's not even a threat you know i've seen anything with a mouth and teeth can be a threat but at the same time i'm like you can tell this snake is domesticated uh they checked it for a chip to see if it was uh you know if they could uh ping off for the owner or whatever and then um after that that was pretty much about it and they pretty much just took it but from what our understanding was is that basically the snake was going to be rehomed um found you know put out of state, whatever, whatever, anything and everything except for being euthanized. Okay. So they didn't make that clear that no. that was the intent. Not Did they all. ever? Wow. So they didn't the... know that until today, actually. I'm the oh, one actually. Wow. According to FWC officer Jonathan Wright's incident report, on the morning of April 6th, this tame reticulated python caught by Anya was euthanized with a bolt gun. <laughs> making Frederick the first victim of the Holy Thursday Massacre. How does that make you guys feel? Me personally, I kind of like, it made me feel really, really sad because this was someone that we thought we could trust. You know, like like my dad said, they didn't say anything about euthanasia. They said they were going to try to rehome him or try to get him out of state. So like when I found that out, I, I was like, like it was really messed up. He was an amazing, beautiful snake. Beautiful snake. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it, you know, such a beautiful creature was put down, and that's not cool. Man. That's, that's, you know. According to the report by FWC officer Lex Cordigera, the discovery of this large reticulated python with a docile temperament prompted the inspection of Chris Coffey's snake inventory on April 6th. However, there was little reason to suspect that the snake had originated in Chris Coffey's collection. Coffee snakes were housed at Bill McAdams' facility in Sunrise, which is about a 35-minute drive, or 13.25 miles, from where Frederick the reticulated python was discovered in Pembroke Pines. As anyone familiar with South Florida would know, this area is one of the most heavily urbanized regions of the state, marked by countless busy roads and dense development. Covering just one mile without being discovered or struck by a vehicle would be an insurmountable task for a slow-moving python. This snake most likely originated in the neighborhood where it was captured. How far is the other guy's place? 15 miles, you said? Yeah, no. So if, for that snake to get all the way over there, yeah. Despite the impossible journey this snake would have had to make from sunrise to Pembroke Pines, FWC officer Cordigera had his orders. On the morning of April 6th, Cordigera initiated contact with Chris Coffey, leaving this message on Coffey's voicemail. Good morning. This message is for Mr. Chris Coffey. This is Investigator Lex Cordigera with Fish and Wildlife at WC. Chris, when you get the message, can you give me a call back at my cell phone? I have a task from Tallahassee. FWC often touts its exotic pet amnesty program, which allows pet owners to surrender and rehome unwanted pets, including conditional and prohibited species, without the threat of prosecution. Neither Chris Coffey nor the Go Lightlies were advised of this program. Like, had we known anything about no that, we would have immediately reached out, you know, for the safety of the, the animal. This is the first, first time I ever heard about yeah, it. Yeah, but they today. didn't also mention euthanasia either. They gave them the impression they were going to try to rehome it when they left, and that's, you know, misleading to the situation. They did write a warning. The warning really doesn't bother me that much at all, but it's just the fact that, like, we're just trying to be helpful. You know, somebody was clearly terrified. They didn't even want to leave their house. They couldn't let their dogs out. Just somebody needs help, and we own snakes, and we're comfortable with this, so let's go for it. I'd rather it be a warning than a ticket, but at the same time, yeah. you know, we're trying to help somebody. So, According to FWC officer Jonathan Wright's incident report, 
Daniel Golightly was issued a written warning for possession of a prohibited species. According to FWC law enforcement, a warning is considered a violation, and any violation may be grounds for license denial and forfeiture of animals. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty messed up to know that they could possibly deny us for yeah. something like that, when literally all she did was just try to help. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty messed up. Is there anything that, that I missed that you guys would like to add? I just have the fuming anger that came out of me when I found out what this guy did. Like, like I've, I've seen the video before, like the video of him doing it and everything like that. And I saw like, I've showed it to some of my friends and my friends, some of my friends like hate snakes, but they're like, I hate snakes, but that's wrong. Like that is just so wrong. Like I've had my snakes for about the longest I've had one, like nine years, and I'm 16. And he's still alive to this day. He's at home right now, you know, sleeping. I can only imagine how it would feel if someone like posted on the news or whatever the heck, they are illegal now. Like you can't own these anymore. And like I said, he he's in my room, he's near my bed. Thinking that I would have to like get rid of him and stuff, that would, that, that would hurt me. That would hurt me. We thank Anya and Daniel Golightly for speaking to us and sharing their story. You can find Anya on YouTube and Instagram as Anya's Animal Adventures. See links to her social media in the description. If you're wondering what you can do to help, we encourage you to call your state representative and state senator to inform them of your concerns with FWC, as well as speak at the upcoming FWC Commission meeting May 10th through 11th in Miami. Stay informed on the issues affecting Florida's animal keepers by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Hold FWC accountable by joining USARC Florida at usarkfl.org and donating to support our lawsuit against FWC.